Now we're going to hear a great example of a fantastic talent, um, and you're going to hear about who maybe along the way has helped him shine a light and develop his career, not only as an influencer, but as a model and uh, at the very start of his career football. But please welcome to the stage, Stephen James. Bravo. <laughs> We have a short film before we get into it, but welcome to the stage for the first time and marker, Thank and of you. course, first time for Istanbul. Yeah, first time. Okay. Okay, Stephen, welcome. Is that uh, we've got an eye on the clock. We're determined okay. to get through this before we get <laughs> thrown out. So in 30 seconds, give me a quick lowdown in your words of your career to date. Yeah, so I started out being a professional football player, um, and then at the age of 21, I had a really serious injury, moved into fashion, um, I've, been, I've been working here for around six years. The last three years have really been determined with social media, Instagram, um, and that's probably been 90% of, uh, of my work. I mean, it's kind of combining between fashion and, and social media is like hand in hand now. So you've got 2.5 million followers. That's incredible. 2.3 million. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, three. We, we'll get there. We'll be there by the end of this session. It's all good. Um, but how do, I mean, how do you even create such a large and engaged following? I think um, just really sort of knowing who your audience is and, um, and really studying who wants to follow you. And then, I mean, really sort of just channeling in onto that. Um, and then obviously I've worked with a lot of brands that kind of have obviously propelled me through different stages. Yeah. So I started off with Philip Pline. I then was working with ASOS. Um, I've done work with Madonna. And it's just a combination that's just like ticked over. So you just drop that Madonna name and we'll come back to that <laughs> yeah. in a minute. Um, but your, your approach to content, as we saw in the film that you created, is quite specific. It's very stylized. How important is that to you? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very important. I, I, I pretty much control all of my social media. So there's a lot of people on the same amount of followers who have managers, have teams. Um, I do everything. I make sure that um, from every aspect, from the final edit to the photographer, to the clothes, to everything. And I just think that has been my, my way of getting to where I've got to. And obviously the tattoos play a very big part in that. Uh, stylized content, but also your personal brand. Tell us a little bit about the tattoos. Yeah, the tattoos have... Um, I saw there was a huge gap in the market um, when I first started with fashion. And it was... I always wanted to get tattoos, but I knew that there was... Uh, it was the, the in-trend thing around five years ago. And um, I pr pretty much went all around the world and got tattoos by the best tattoo artists. Um, Whatever little money I had, I spent it on, on tattoos. But it was, it was, there, was a, there was a goal at the end of it. I knew what I was going to be. I knew where I was going to arrive. And f thank God that I <laughs> arrived there. <laughs> it's incredible having that vision. But I think the tattoos you were saying to me earlier mean a lot to you and actually represent different moments in your life. Yeah. Um, yeah each part of my body is, represents different parts. So. I grew up listening to Morrissey, to the Smiths, and, and that was a huge part, which is all covered on that side. And then I have Salvador Dali, I have Frida Kahlo. I have so many different parts of my life that um, I sort of like, just put them on my mind. And part of it for you is about changing the perception of individuals with tattoos, isn't it? Because is maybe when you sort of see someone with tattoos, you think about their lifestyle, but for you is this is, uh, about showcasing a really healthy, positive yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, that, that was the difference. It wasn't to be another guy with tattoos, it was to, to be a guy who lives a really healthy lifestyle. I, I, I had all that discipline through playing football, so I trained seven days a week, play, I mean, twice a day sometimes, 
and it's a completely different contrast to what people are used to. People are used to seeing a guy with tattoos, partying, doing everything uh, you can imagine. So I think, again, that was, that was another thing that really sort of helped me to stand out from everyone else. I think that discipline that you mentioned from football has come right the way through your career. It's not just yeah. in terms of the health and the fitness, is that, of course, to be a professional yeah. footballer, you need to have great discipline. So how's that impacted? Yeah, I think um, the, time, uh, the 17 or 18 years of playing football professionally has, has always um, has really sort of taught me everything that I've taken into fashion, you know, wanting to be the best, wanting to be number one, um, not stopping until you get to number one, you know, and I, I think, and like I said, I'm, I'm thankful for all the time that I did while playing football, um, and yeah. So um, we talked a little bit about uh, the, the Madonna story, but I would love just to sort of tie that together with um, the, the I guess the response from your model agents when you started thinking about getting tattoos, because it's a very strong visual identity. What was their feedback? Yeah, they, well, their feedback was le less tattoos. Um, <laughs> and at that, you didn't in, listen. Yeah, and at that moment, I, I, I pretty much had no money. We were living, we were staying on bunk beds in Milan, um, and I just didn't listen. I, I was so tunnel vision of what I wanted, what I knew what was right for me. And um, yeah, fast forward three, four years and, and I've achieved everything I really wanted to achieve in fashion. So we're gonna run out of time. So if we have time, yeah. we'll come back to Madonna. Okay. But I want to hear about your latest venture. So being a model and influencer is being an entrepreneur. You manage yourself. But you've launched a tattoo and barbershop in Barcelona. Is that, and you've done it all on your own. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I sort of hit a point where like, it was great having 2.3 million followers, that's all fantastic, but I, I wanted to monetize it, I wanted to start like, really using that audience for something, you know, like all these people, they're buying in, they want to look like you, they want to buy your clothes, they want to have the same haircut, they want to do tattoos, so why not provide that directly from me rather than... And why Barcelona? Um, I just love the city, I think Barcelona is a great place, I think. Everyone has a real good feeling about Barcelona. There was a, there was a real gap in the market as well um, in regards to barber shops and tattoo shops, you know. And there's, uh, I believe, is that you've hit the spotlight for L'Oreal, is that they've seen what you're doing and you're going to be collaborating with them going forward? Yeah, um, I'm working very closely with David Beckham. He's got a, he's got a groom, men's grooming products. It's um, House 99. Um, they've, yeah. they've shown a lot of faith in the, in the business and, and we're working closely, we're working for the next couple of years together. Fantastic. Yeah. And so what next for you personally is that you're, I believe there's expansion for Elijah the Barbershop in Madrid and yeah. Valencia, but what for you personally next? Yeah, so um, I work in quite a few um, like co-branding, I, I collaborate quite a lot. So. Um, at the moment, I have a few collaborations with Jorge Lorenzo on a pair of sunglasses, and that's more my interest. I'm not really interested in being the, the face of a brand anymore. I'm more interested in being, uh, creating a collection, you know, because I've got more to offer to a brand. I've worked for six years building brands up and being the image of them, and I've seen pretty much most brands I've worked for, they become successful. So I want a piece of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the discipline of creating your own uh, barbershop as well is that it's given yeah. you a hunger to take ownership yeah. of that, right? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that's really allowed me to sort of see value in myself rather than, um, you know, just being used one or two days for a photo shoot and then the brand obviously uses your image for the next year or you're synonymous mm -hmm. with the brand forever. Yeah. I think it's, it's really important for me now at this stage in my career and my life to really create my own brand and really progress Elijah and progress who is Elijah and I mean um, we're in a really good we're in a really good period where you can be young you can be 27 you can be 28 and you can pretty much like uh, own your social media business and yeah. it's a lot of money to be made. So tell me what you would what advice you'd give to the next generation of Instagram Instagram mm. as influencers coming through. Um, just I mean just have faith in because I mean, when I, I remember when I first started with Instagram, I, I remember uh, everyone was laughing when I got the first one or two followers, and the same people who were laughing then, 
I'm two million more than them, you know? So yeah. I, I think that as long as you just have a plan and you stay tunnel vision and um, you stick with what you believe in, I think you can, you can achieve what you want. That's a great note to uh, end on, is that uh, to be authentic, to have a vision, yeah. which clearly you've had throughout your own career, is that, Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to call it time because we've got 28 <laughs> seconds to go seconds before so we get the music. Yeah. Um, is that, please, if you're not following uh, Stephen, you check out his Instagram. It's incredible. And watch this space. I think we're going to see a lot more. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.